Wow, yikes. So they missed the boat there with the poison, so we'll win via poison this turn, this game. And that's the game. Welcome to Menacing MTG. We have a Golgari deck and it's uh, Sorulf's World based around Sorulf, although there are many components to this deck. Um, this is a classic deck with um, multiple ways to win or multiple avenues to victory. Um, and one of those is that we're able to kind of just overrun the opponent with medium to large creatures, many of them having um, flying or death touch. And uh, so, yeah, and Sorolf gets big as uh, permits the opponent um, controls are put into the graveyard. We put 1-1 one, one counters on Sorolf at the beginning of your upkeep. Sorolf Sir Rolf has one or more counters. You may remove all of them. If you do, exile each non-land permanent with a converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of counters. Remove this way. Ultra potent um, ability. We do have four in this deck, even though um, it is legendary, um, just because this is a high potency card. And we're willing to kind of just roll with it. We want it on the board. We often get it on the board within... Uh, you know, the first three turns or so because there's four in the deck. Uh, so, yeah, that's a big feature. It gets big. You can keep it big, you know, if you don't need to remove stuff. Um, so then the other avenue of to victory we have is that we have some Death Touch. Not a ton, but enough. So we have two Blight Blades, two Fin, which uh, all Death Touch creatures that do damage, deal damage in addition to normally with poison counters, two poison counters per creature that deals damage. So we have two of those. We have two questing beasts. And then we have two Nighthawk Scavenger. So and then we have uh, Vengeful Reaper. So that's a total of um, eight, nine creatures with uh, death touch. But we do have Binding of the Old Gods, which destroys non-land permanent and opponent controls now that's super powerful not limited to creatures um but uh this is third turn that this is on the board it gives creatures death touch so it can give others oh i missed one so boot nipper also can come on with death touch or lifelink so potentially 11 creatures with death touch all right now let's talk about removal because this is the other thing is that um, I'm finding with this deck that um, opponents fold very quickly. And part of the reason is because they're dealing with things like Death Touch. They're dealing, dealing with Sorolf that can remove their things. And they're, we're dealing with really good removal. Um, and so let's take a quick look at that removal. We have here um, one Farika's Libation, three Soul Shatter, um, four Binding of the Old Gods. Okay, so... That is uh, a total of eight removal cards, and that's not counting Sorolf, all right, and Death Touch. So it's just a brutal scenario for the opponent. Um, we do have um, oh, additional removal here that I missed. Uh, two Elspeth's Nightmare, able to re uh, exile creatures, or excuse me, destroy them with power of two or less. Then you get to remove a non-creature, non-land spell. And then you get to ex exile the opponent's graveyard. So yeah, we're hitting them from all angles here. Um, the Nighthawk Scavenger does have Lifelink. Murderous Rider, oh, I didn't mention Murderous Rider for removal. Also a kind of a dual purpose card and Lifelink. So it kind of keeps us in games. But we, we didn't really mention much about the um, Sagas. And there are a total of eight sagas in this deck. So we have three Binding of the Titans, and this thing is surprisingly powerful. It mills three cards. Then you exile up to two cards from a grave from graveyards. For each uh, creature that you exile, you gain two life. This has been very helpful. Uh, but then the last is that you get to return a creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So ultra potent. So as you're losing things, you can bring them back three of those. Then we have one, the first I roam games, and this creates a 1-1 human search, uh, 
soldier token, then you can put three 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control. So you can imagine dropping three 1-1 one, one counters on Sorolf. Makes him extremely dangerous. Then um, if you control a creature with a power of four or greater, draw two cards. Then at the end, create a gold uh, token. So in other words, additional mana. All right, so you have that. Then we have, of course, the four binding of the old gods, destroy uh, non-land permanent, then put a forest onto the battlefield tapped, then um, creatures you control gain death touch. So even creatures uh, not within the 11 get death touch. For example, Luris, for example, Sorulf, for example, Murderous Rider, um, and so on, and uh, Eradicator Valkyrie, which is just another fabulous card here. Um, and you can, with this, you can sack, uh, when it attacks, you can run boast and sack a creature like a blight blade and force the opponent to sack a creature, further bulking up Sorolf. So yeah, this is a nice synergy-based deck with multiple ways to kind of destroy and demoralize the opponent. Keep your eye out for quick um, forfeits. Uh, quick land base here, we have 24 lands, one woodland chasm, uh, two Dark Boar Pathways, three Fable Passage, eight Snow-Covered Forests, ten Snow-Covered Swamps. Have a blast with this deck. It is cool. Um, thanks a ton for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, suggestions, feedback. Have a great day. Okay, it's with great reluctance I take this hand as we can play nothing with what we have. Um, so we're going to need more land, hopefully a green. Okay, we get black, we'll take that. Although, again, it doesn't allow us to play anything, but any land we can get here. And more black, so eventually we can get Eradicator Valkyrie on. Which will be fragile going against a um, green-red deck. Path to the World Tree, okay. We're going to need to get uh, some aggro action going here. Okay, there's green. That's great. So right now we can um, put up Sorof. And we may not be seeing many creatures here. But we may be seeing some removal. Path to the World Tree. Okay, this is a bit of a problem here as they're pounding out the lands. Okay. Valkyrie comes on. The longer we can last and avoid removal, the stronger we'll be. Next turn, unless we get a green land, it'll be Binding of the Titans and Bootnipper. Okay, there's a creature. And because we got a Fable Passage and are allowed to put up a forest here, we're going to go for Questing Beast. No blocks are off. Okay, this is good. They're on the move here, and we need to make this happen fast. Okay, that's a scary creature, and we don't get removal, unfortunately. But we'll put up Death Touch, and they fold. Okay, this is a very good looking hand. We're going to need one more black mana to make it all click. Shouldn't be too difficult to get one.
Hey, Giant Ox, probably looking at vehicles here. I'll be tempted to get that off the board pretty quickly. Okay. And here it goes. We're going to need a, another land here. But here comes Finn to drop some poison. Black mana would really be awesome here. We don't get it. So we got to throw up Binding of the Titans, which will eventually get us some land. And there goes some land into the graveyard, so that's fine. We're going to put up some more poison. Okay. And there, here comes the plow, colossal plow in hand. Okay. So Rolf comes on. And we're going to come in with Finn because it'll bulk up Sarolf if they block with the Owl. They're in a tough position because they don't want to take on six poison. We can remove, um, possibly. Okay, there's six. We do have Call of Death Dweller on, on mass, and they're going to just fold it up. Okay, seeing a lot of that with this deck, just uh, early folds. Okay, this is a great hand. Be looking for more black mana eventually, but this is excellent. Okay, we'll bring on Finn early. We get to go first too, which is a major coup. And there is Boot Nipper. So we're, we've got three um, Death Touch creatures in hand. Really not that many all told in this deck, but just another avenue to victory here with the poison. Okay, and that is exactly what we needed there. We're gonna throw up Sir Rolf here. We'll drop some poison, two point poison counters there, two per um, each damage from each creature that you uh, deal to the opponent. We can bring the questing beast in this coming turn. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. We're going Questing Beast, bringing in the aggro machine here. And they can block Finn with the... or Sarolf with the wall. And they can't even kill Finn during this attack, so... This is going to uh, cause some pretty good damage, and they don't block any of the Death Touch creatures, and... Here comes a load of poison, and this is going to be hard to stop here. We will probably see another flyer here, but if it's bigger, we got Soul Shatter. So, um, and Sarolf comes up to a 4-4. Four, four. So every kind of problem occurring here, pacifism on questing these. Okay, nicely done. We're going to decline that. We won't worry about the wall right now. And this is really kind of exactly what we wanted here. Another land to go black. Question is, are we going to go Binding of the Titans or Boot Nipper? 
and um, we're going to go boot nipper just because we've got them on the heels with the uh, poison. We may see a fold here as Sir Ralph grows. Okay, so we'll see Sir Ralph grow even further, so we can remove something here. So that we could remove a creature with a mana cost of three or less just by removing counters from Sir Ralph, and they're going anticipate, so this game is over, folks. They did get mana, can they play something? Pacifism, nicely done. Unfortunately, they put it on the wrong creature. Either way, it's over. Wow, yikes. So they missed the boat there with the poison, so we'll win via poison this turn, this game. And that's the game. This deck is tough. Just, it comes at you from all different angles. Okay, this is a very strong hand. We're going to keep it. We get something out on turn one. We can put Vengeful Reaper in Fortel on turn two. And either play Vengeful Reaper or run Soul Shatter on turn three. We have two green mana, which means that the future looks very bright for Questing Beast. So we are hoping to get a black mana within the next... Uh, three turns. And there it is. Okay, and at this point, foretell. We'll come in, take a shot. Now, all kinds of options look appealing to us. For example, um, let's see what's best here. Let's go up here and bring the Reaper. We'll just uh, leave the Blight Blade back and we'll come in with the Reaper. Now if we were to get a Finn, we'd be able to deal poison counters like crazy. Questing Beast is next. They'll remove the Reaper, but they're leaving themselves open here. And here comes a green. Here we come. Five damage. Now they're going to come in and get Soul Shatter, which is a heartbreaker. The opponent's dropped their third mana, but it's not going to be usable this turn, as it's a Fable Passage. It'll come back tapped. They do have the plant that taps for mana of any color. Okay, scavenging ooze. Okay, it becomes a 3-3, and off the board the ooze will come. In they come for 5 damage. Now we'll get our graveyard exiled. Okay, we've got a Farika, and we're going to go there. They're going to fold, and this happens an enormous amount with this deck. So another win for the uh, Sir Rolf Golgari.